Hi, I'm Dan and welcome to the Airbrush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm gonna to be cutting some very intricate stencils or templates on my Cricut. I happen to have a Cricut Explorer Air 2. They have several different models, but that's just the one I prefer for my shop. I do wanna say one thing about the video that you'll notice in the video that I have a black background around my cutting area. When I size it to nine inches, that black background is going to recognize that as the cut line. If you don't want that to be the cut line and you want to size your actual object to the nine inches, like I did on my second cut that I did off camera, you have to make sure that you delete your black background so it doesn't recognize it as a cut. So when you bring it into the area where you're going to make your cut, it will only recognize your object and not your outer edge. So anything that you see outside of your object that is in black, just keep in mind, it will cut. As you can see here, I have three different stencils cut, all at nine inches. You'll see that one is significantly, as I used in the video, smaller than the other two. But I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you just how intricate and small of detail you can get with this machine. So with that, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing, hit that bell so you get future notifications, give me a couple comments, Good or bad, it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm and helps this channel grow. With that, let's get started. All right, so today we're gonna to be cutting out two very complex templates. So we wanna start by finding what we want to cut out. We're gonna cut out this one called Heroes first. We're just gonna drag and drop it right there. Now, I always pick about moderate to complex, middle of the road. You know, what I'd like to mention about what I just dragged and dropped in there is I started off with a PDF, but I had to save it as a JPEG or a PGN. Um, I use either or. I think this one happens to be a JPEG. I just want to note that a PDF will not work. So we'll hit continue. So my object is a little larger than what fits on my screen, but that's okay. I just came up here and hit the zoom out. So when I first brought it in, it looked like it wasn't there, but I could tell by the gray background that there was something there. So I just came up to the zoom out. All right, now this is where you wanna pick this select and erase tool. And what I wanna do is erase out everything that I want to cut, okay? So if I zoom in, you can see all of these lines. Now, what I mean by this is a complex template is all of these lines in here are only going to be a 16th inch thick. So it's really going to show you how this cutter can perform. Now, I created this on an AutoCAD program. So all my lines are nice and crisp and connected. I do want to say that if your lines are not connected, like if there was a break in, let's just say this H, say there's a break in this little corner where these two lines did not connect, it would bleed out and your eraser pattern would just, you know, bleed all over the place. You got to make sure that all of your lines are connected. Very important. A lot of times hand sketches do not work very well with this program. So we're just going to go through here and select what we want to delete. Okay, so let's just zoom in here a little bit. So I'm going to continue on selecting here and we'll catch you in a few minutes. All right, well, there you have it. Everything is all erased out that needs to be erased out. So from there, we're going to hit continue. Now, you get two options here. Print, then cut image, 
or a cut image. We just want a cut image. I'm not quite sure why you'd want to print it, then cut it. I'd never do that, but we're going to select cut image. When you do that, you can see the green rectangle around it. That means that is selected. We're going to hit upload. Once we upload it, we're going to select the image. I'm going to say insert images. Once we do that, it's going to appear on our screen. Now, this is all very black and very huge. Now, what you need to look at is right here where it says size. You got width and height. Right now it's at 45 and it's 70.833, right? Well, that's way too big. So we're going to set our width at about nine inches. And when you do that, the height will automatically adjust. Now, you can take and grab this by the corner and stretch this, but I don't want to do that. I would rather set my size by my width and my height. I'm actually going to set my height at nine inches for the project that I want to be doing. And then that will set that width automatically at you know, about five and seven eighths. So once we have it to that point, you can see it's nine inches here. It's giving you your width up here. It's also giving it to you here. Now we're ready. All right, so now we're gonna hit make it. We're gonna check where it's at. That looks good. I'm gonna be putting my grip board up into the upper left corner. This is going to represent my template material. It looks good. Material size, 12 by 12. That is the gripping mat. You can see the measurements right here. 12 across, 12 down. It's gonna be my image. Let's click continue. So this is the part where it's telling you to connect the Explorer. So I'm gonna turn the Explorer on. I happen to have mine connected up via Bluetooth, so it's wireless. I already have the stencil film 0.4 millimeter selected, but I'm going to browse materials just to show you where to get this. Okay, so you wanna come down, there's fabric, there's all kinds of you know different materials, there's your iron on, leather paper. So you wanna come down under plastic, okay? It's a stencil film 4.0 and I already have it tagged as a favorite. You can do that. Um, it'll ask you, you know, if you pick it, if you want to save it as a favorite, I have mine as a favorite. That's why I came up, but I'm going to click that just to show you. I'm going to hit done now. So that's step one, selecting material. Step two is going to be load your fine point blade or whatever blade it may be. In this case, it is going to be the fine point blade. Okay. So it's already loaded. Then it's going to ask you to load the mat and press the load button. All right, so before we get started, I'm going to show you the stencil film that I'm using is a matte stencil film. You get four nine by 12 medium weight sheets in this package. Now the medium weight is about probably about around the you know, 0.4 uh, mil range, what the machine's calling for. I know that probably just because of the fact I've used this many, many times. That's all I've ever used. When you set it to point forward in the machine, that sets the pressure of the blade and it absolutely is no problem. It cuts it very clean, very good. Um, this particular uh, stencil film is made by Graphics. Okay, and I'll put a link down below for this uh, particular material so you can get some for yourself. So with that, let's load up the machine. All right, so the first thing you're going to do after turning the machine on, I did that previously, as you saw, and I am hooked up wirelessly, which is really a nice feature. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit the open button. Already off camera, put my film to my cutting mat. This happens to be a light grip mat. Medium grip works just fine also. Um, I use both. I have this placed at 0 to 9 and down to 12. Okay, because that's where it is, if you remember, on the machine where we were. So the next step is the machine's telling us to load the mat. 
there's two little slots down here. You want to push your matches till it stops. Once that happens, you hit your flashing arrow button to load it. It is now going to sense where your mat's at. Once you get it to that point, all you got to do is hit the flashing cricket button, which is the go button. It's analyzing and sensing. It's going to start cutting. All right, now that it says it's 100%, all we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and hit the release button, release it out. We'll take it over to the table and weed it out. All right, so a really cool tool and what I would consider a must have when you're doing something like this is a weeding tool. You know, a lot of people might wanna do it with an X-Acto blade, and that's fine. This weeding tool has a point on it, but it's not a point where it's going to, you know, um, be as sharp as an X-Acto blade. It's just a great all around tool. I'll pop a link down for a weeding tool for you down below. Very helpful tool. So what we're going to do first to get started is we're going to pick up a, an edge here. We're going to see how well we did. Okay. And as you can see, like I said, that blade just you know does a really good job of just cutting right through. I'm just going to take out my outer edge first, which would be my negative template. And then we're going to weed out the middle and the pieces that we don't need. Sometimes I like to lay another piece down here to put my hand on because this mat is, you know, it's not real sticky, but I don't like my hand sticking to it. So I even take another piece, a full piece. Lay it down here, lay my hand on top. Another trick. That piece came out while cutting. Sometimes that happens. Even though it was cut well, I just wasn't getting the weeding tool underneath it. I'll continue to weed this and we'll see you in a few minutes.
well, there you have it. You know, templates are made to get you, you know, 90, 95% there. It's not a stencil. I never think of airbrushing templates as stencils. If you're going to stencil something, that would be more like, you know, you're just going to put a, uh, something up and just spray one color over it and be done. This particular template um, is going to get you about 90, you know, 90 to 95% there. You know, so you might have to do you know, a little bit of work with the, the center of the R here, you know, a little bit of work here and there. This up here, uh, I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board a little bit and I'll just revise this a little bit where I make these lines just a little bit thicker because they were so thin. I mean, they're about a 64th which is really just crazy when you think about it. So uh, I'm going to go back to the drawing board and thicken them up a little bit. But besides that, I mean, just phenomenal. Couldn't be happier with it. Another little tip when you're doing things that are really small and intricate like this, and you have all these little pieces on here. Now, again, you got to be careful. This is a straight edge razor blade. I'm just going to come in very lightly to the touch. I'm not really digging in at all. Just getting it off my surface. Otherwise, you know, trying to pick all of that off with your fingers is just a nightmare. This just makes it very easy work. And your cutting board is ready for the next one. All right, so there you have it. I did the second one off camera, but I did want to show you again how detailed you can get with this machine. And the first one we did, I am probably going to make this one a little bigger. I'll give it a second go. But this is just a perfect example of how intricate that blade can get and the results you can get with this machine. For the price, you just can't beat it. I had professional vinyl cutting equipment that cost thousands of dollars more than this machine. And I'm not sponsored or anything by Cricut, but the proof is in the results. It's a great bang for your buck. Well, there you have it. Just like I said, I think it's a great machine for your shop. Bang for your buck. You can't beat it. Again, I had professional equipment in years past. I don't really need it for my shop for what I'm doing. I'm not cutting vinyl for a living. I'm cutting some stencils out, some templates to airbrush with. It's a fantastic tool. So with that, I hope you like this type of content. If you do, again, hit that bell, hit that subscribe, check out those affiliate links, give me some comments, good or bad. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.